हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी कम टू लर्न अबाउट द नेचुरल वेजिटेशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ इंडिया हैज अ वाइड वैरायटी ऑफ नेचुरल वेजिटेशन हाउएवर अ लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ द ओरिजिनल फॉरेस्ट्स cover has been removed mainly because of increasing population that required more land for cultivation and settlement but we still have a large amount of vegetation left and india's natural vegetation can be classified into five major types which includes the tropical rainforest tropical deciduous forest thorny forest tidal forests and mountainous forest so we are going to learn about each forest its characteristics and the different types of trees which are found in these forests today now tropical rainforest which has got evergreen trees evergreen trees means those trees which shed their leaves but the entire forest will not shed their leaves at the same time that is why they are known as evergreen trees they are found in those areas where the rainfall is more than 200 cm so they are concentrated mostly on the western part of the western ghats then they are found in large areas of the northeastern parts of india where the rainfall is very heavy they are also found in the coastal regions of southern west bengal and eastern orissa and they are also found in the andaman and nicobar islands now here the vegetation mainly consists of hardwood evergreen trees which include ebony mahogany cinchona which is a medicinal plant from where we get quinine which is used to treat malaria in these forests bamboo is also a very commonly found tree and it is found abundantly in those areas where the rainfall is very heavy next we come to the tropical deciduous forest now the tropical deciduous forests are also known as the monsoon forest and it is the most commonly found forest in india here you can see that this type of forest is found in large areas of uttar pradesh bihar jharkhand parts of madhya pradesh chatisgarh orissa telangana uh, maharashtra tamil nadu and they can be seen also along the foothills of the himalayas now here the rainfall ranges between 100 to 200 cm the trees shed their leaves in the beginning of the summer season that is why they are known as deciduous forests deciduous forests has one major characteristic that they shed their leaves at least once a year and since the trees are found in pure strands that is they are found in one particular region so it appears that is the forest has become bare when 
the trees shed their leaves here the most commonly found trees include the shisham sandalwood sal teak teak is very commonly used for making furniture and so is sal other trees include kusum kher the arjun tree bamboo etc in the drier regions especially parts of uttar pradesh and eastern rajasthan where the rainfall is about 50 to 100 cm the vegetation becomes slightly dry and here we normally find the babool tree it is a drier kind of the short trees of the acacia variety now the tropical thorn forest is commonly found in the dry regions of rajasthan gujarat haryana and punjab where the rainfall is comparatively less and it is less than 50 cm here most of the vegetation consists of xerophytes now these xerophytes have got certain adaptation these plants are having a shallow root system so that they can absorb whatever water they can get their roots and which can help them to survive some plants store water in their stems which makes their stems very thick the leaves are reduced to spines so that transpiration is reduced to the minimum some of the roots of the plant can be very very deep so that they can go deep in search of ground water a few of the plants have got seeds which stay dormant for years but the moment they get a little water or whenever there is a small amount of rainfall they begin to quickly germinate and increase their progeny so these are the characteristics of xerophytes which are commonly found in the thorn forest the mountain forest varies with altitude that is the vegetation depends upon the altitude and it goes on changing with the height of the mountain so right at the foothills we find tropical rainforest which mainly consists of oak and other varieties of tropical forest slightly higher we find the deciduous forest where the leaves of the trees are shed at least once a year still higher which is the most common type of mountain forest are the coniferous trees which are needle shaped and they are triangular in shape that is the leaves are needle like and this the forest that is the trees look like that of a triangle still higher up in the mountains it is covered mainly with shrubs and grasses and beyond the snow line nothing grows some of the most commonly found trees in the mountain vegetation includes pine deodar or the cedar deodar is the name of cedar in india silver fir is also found commonly in the higher reaches of the himalayas the oak tree 
is found in the lower areas that is about 200 meters uh, in the uh, mountain uh, slopes now this is a picture of the tidal forest or the mangrove forest and it is found in swampy areas that are constantly washed by seawater during the high tide. Now such vegetation has got adaptability to survive both in salty water as well as fresh water. Now, such vegetation is commonly found in the eastern coastal region of India, especially along the Ganga Brahmaputra Valley, especially over here in southern part of uh, India, uh, sorry, southern part of West Bengal, where we have the Sundarban tree, which gets its name from the abundance of the Sundari trees. Elsewhere, we have mangroves along the coastal area where we find the delta of the river Mahanadi. Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, all these areas have mangroves abundantly and they grow very, very easily in these areas. In the west also, in some places, we have mangrove forests, especially along the coast of Gujarat and in some areas in Goa. Elsewhere, mangrove trees are found or tidal forests are commonly found in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Sundari trees have got very durable wood and it is mainly used to make boats because people who live along these areas their major occupation is fishing so the trees provide ample amount of wood to make boats which is used by the fishermen who are living along the coastal area of the Sundarban region now forests are of great importance for us the first being that they absorb huge amount of carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So they act like a carbon sink. A large forest cover is very important in maintaining the balance between these gases. Plants absorb water and release a lot of moisture in the air. Thus, they help in cloud formation. So wherever there is forest, there is a huge amount of rainfall because they release huge amount of water which get accumulated and lead to cloud formation and that brings a lot of rainfall. Besides all this, the roots of the trees help in holding the soil. They bind the soil very well and thus save the soil from getting eroded by winds or by running water. So forests are of great importance for us. Besides all these which are helpful in the environment, Forests provide us with many products, the first being timber, which is used for making furniture, boats, bridges and other day-to-day -day use. They provide fuel wood for cooking and various other purposes. Besides this, different kinds of raw materials we get from the forest. We can get a lot of bamboo, 
different kinds of fruits, oil, herbs for medicines, oils, dyes, gums, varnish, all this can be obtained from the forest. So forests are of great importance to human beings. They are a very great national resource. Now forests, we all know, is a natural wealth of the country, but it needs to be protected. At one time, India had a large part covered with forests, but cutting down of trees for wood, clearing of forests for cultivation and housing have greatly reduced the forest cover. Now this loss of forest is called deforestation. Deforestation can be checked by planting trees wherever there has been commercial felling of trees. It is also very important to control overgrazing because India has a large number of bovine population. Now these bovine population, if they are allowed to graze, they not only graze the grass, but they also pull out the roots of the grass and consume them. This results in the soil to be laid bare and that leads to the erosion of the soil. So it is very important to control overgrazing and that can save our resources like soil from getting depleted. Now the Forest Research Institute, which has been set up in Dehradun, manages and protects India's forests. Apart from conducting different kinds of research, it trains people how to look after the forest. Looking after the forest so as to protect the environment and at the same time meet the needs of the people is known as social forestry. Now children like you all, college students, many organizations, they organize one Mahotsav, that is the Forest Festival. It is mainly celebrated during the month of July and August when the monsoon is at its peak. Children like you all, they go around taking saplings of trees and plant trees along canals, and along the roadsides, along railway tracks and several other areas where there are lack of trees. This helps in improving the number of trees at the same time brings about more greenery around the places where we are staying. So today we have learned about the different types of vegetation in India and how we need to protect the forests because they are a national wealth. I hope you have enjoyed the video. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.